The presence of an all-black squirrel within a gray squirrel population is interesting and different, but not necessarily unique or rare. In the end, it's a squirrel and a backyard pest. This is a story of a hunt for the black squirrel. Like the gray squirrels, the black squirrels don't sit still for long. I think there's extra pressure on the black squirrels because their coloration does not lend itself to camouflage either in lawns or in wooded environments. Plenty of other squirrels present themselves as targets of opportunity while I wait for the next appearance of the black squirrel. Take this gray squirrel for instance. Really just an awful shot. You can see here that the crosshairs are a little bit right of the target when I squeeze the trigger and the pellet zooms just past him. Not a great shot, but a lucky day for him. This chipmunk, on the other hand, well, just listen to him bark. He's letting everybody know that I'm out there, and he's certainly letting me know where he is. Who doesn't want to see that in slow motion? Both these last two shots were taken with my 22 caliber FX Impact Mark I. I was shooting the JSB 22 caliber pellets out of the 700 millimeter barrel. In this case, I actually found the pellet which had gone through the chipmunk and then bounced off the Menards bucket behind it. As you can see, the Hades pellet expanded quite a bit even on the small body of the chipmunk. This is the closest I've come to recovering a pellet from the body of an animal that I've shot with the Hades pellet. The black squirrel was back, but like it always does, it seems to know where I am and when I'm outside, and it seems to stay just out of reach just behind a tree or a branch, just in a spot where it's really hard to get a good clean shot. When this one first appeared, with the sunlight at its back, I thought it was the black squirrel. It wasn't. But it did find that thick spot where the black squirrel likes to hide. distance on this shot is only about 40 yards. It wouldn't be a bad shot to take except there's a whole lot of brush in the way and it's really easy to clip a branch and then have a pellet fly off 
in a different direction. I don't mind missing, but I don't want to hit the squirrel and wound it. If it would just keep moving to the other side of the tree, there's a large open area and I might just be able to get a good shot on it. Let's take a look at this shot in slow motion. The squirrel settles just enough for me to get a shot just behind the neck on his shoulder. You can just see the pellet streaking towards him here. My Air Gunners of Egypt camera mount reverses the image because of the prism it uses. So what you're seeing here is actually the exit wound. He's back. It's really him this time. Not a trick of the light. The black squirrel is back. Right now he's at about 50 yards. But if I can get him into the clear, I'm going to take the shot. He's not cooperating, and I have to shift my position to try to keep him where I can see him. On top of that, there's another chipmunk who's screaming like mad to let everybody in the neighborhood know that I'm out and gunning for them. And then finally, he stops. about a 40 yard headshot. All I could really see was his head and if I hadn't been tracking him to where he stopped I don't know that I would have actually been able to even notice him to have a shot. The only reason I was able to make it and the reason I took it with some confidence is because I worked a lot with this particular rifle. I know exactly how to dial the scope to get the crosshairs exactly where I want them to go and at the time, there really wasn't any wind to speak of to compensate for. If you want to be ready to take a quality shot when it counts, you have to do the work up front and make sure you know your equipment. Like I said before, black squirrels in my area aren't rare. They aren't super common, but they definitely aren't rare. Not two days later, this guy appeared. I shot and I missed. It was a clean miss right over his back. I had miscalculated the range. You can hear me dialing the scope. Now let's see if it does any good.
You can see in the slow motion that because I miscalculated the range and was actually holding fairly high, the pellet sails right over the squirrel, freaking him out but doing him no harm. I can make all the excuses in the world for this. I had two great shots at a very reasonable range on this squirrel and I missed them cleanly both times. The bottom line is I took two bad shots and while I gave this guy something to be thankful for, I didn't put him down humanely and that's my goal. I'll get him next time.